everyone. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I'm here today with episode four of the flea market style traveler's notebook um, make along. So this is the second page of our journal. <clears throat> and so we're going to go through the layout together. So for this page, you're going to need some kind of a graph paper. You could use ledger paper. Um, that's just what I'm choosing for this. You don't have to use this kind of paper, but you can. Um, so for this, I added a belly band to the front of the page. So this ends up being, um, I believe, what, page number three in the journal. So yeah, because we have one, two and this would be the third page so um this is pages three four and i believe um 57 58 so the third page i've added this belly band so i added just two pieces of fabric which i stitched together and i glued them onto the paper i didn't stitch them you could also stitch them across then i added some kind of a collage glue down i use this little bird from a vintage children's book um, but the theme for the inside of these two pages is to do some stenciling and then on this side I added a scrap fabric tab with a charm on a bulb pin and then at the back here we're going to do a nice pocket with a rounded corner from some scrapbook paper and then some kind of a vintage piece of ephemera so for this one i chose this indian hawthorne plant card this is like a 70s box of plant cards that i got and then i covered the back and inked it up so that is the project for today so i'll just set this aside and we're going to be working on this journal today so i have gathered i think most of the supplies um, to go ahead and make this. So I'm going to use the same paper as I used for that one. And what I did is I went ahead <clears throat> ahead of time and I created my belly band <coughs> or sorry my, my fabric flip. Um, was I calling it a belly band the whole time? This is a fabric flip. So instead of using two pieces of fabric this time I took this super cute picture of cats on bikes that's printed on cotton and I stitched it to this piece of organza and that is what I'm going to use uh, right here as my fabric flip. So I think I'm going to once again just glue it on like I did with the last one. So then I'm just going to run a bead of glue across the top here and then bring it on up and just lie it down on top of there and give it a little bit of drying time. Now the inside of our paper is going to be stenciled. So I need to grab a stencil. So I'll do that now. So just pull my stencil bin over here and find one that I like. Something a little bit different than the last one, which was a lacy one. I like the lacy stencils a lot. <laughs> um, let me see. This one. This is a nice one. Okay, so I think we'll use this stencil and then we need to select a color that we want to stencil in. So these are nice flowers. And I think what I'm going to stencil in maybe is some kind of a blue, blue green. And I just have to get my ink dauber, not that one. This is the one. Pardon my reach. <laughs> I've decided to place my inks that I don't use all the time on the shelf that I keep behind my desk and it's not as convenient as it was when they were all here but it does tidy my desk up a little bit so there's that. <laughs> okay so I'm going to use salvage patina and that's just about dry. It's dry enough for me to flip it over and not be con concerned really. <clears throat> okay Actually, instead of using a dauber, I'm going to use a brush. I just use these little makeup brushes. I get them at the Dollar Tree <clears throat> and they are really nice for stenciling. So I'm just going to line this up and think about 
where the edge of my paper is right there okay now you can choose to do like a full page stencil or you could just do bits like you could just do you know a flower in the middle or flowers on the edge um, I often do the top and bottom opposite corners today I'm just kind of going to go a little randomly here my first time using this stencil. We have something underneath here. had an extra little piece of plastic that didn't get pulled off the stencil. Okay, I think that might be fine for this page. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to do the same kind of thing um, now on the bottom corner of this side. Throughout this series, there's going to be days where we have slightly more complicated layouts and then others won't be as complicated. This one I don't think is too complicated. It might take you a little bit more time than me to just gather your supplies, to make your fabric flip and whatnot, but it's not too bad. Okay. <clears throat> stencil back. Now the next thing that we want to do, where's my other one here? Okay so we have our fabric flip here. Now so that's done. Now we need to go inside and we need to add our little collage. So I'm going to be doing something a little similar in that I've got a similar image from the same book. It's a Tasha Tudor book actually. So I'm just going to tear this little mouse sitting on a mushroom. So just tear him out. And then I will ink around him with some nice bright spring green. Then I'm going to take a look at what I have left of this piece of book page and I like that so let's go ahead and actually we'll glue that down to exactly where I want it before I start to tear so that I get it in the exact spot that I want. Okay. Just want to sort of frame his little head with these green bits up here. And then again, just tearing around the outside of these images. Hopefully you can see this. I know I'm kind of in an awkward, I'm just tearing. I'm just tearing this little bit around here. Okay. All right, so that's the piece as I want it for gluing down. So then we're going to glue this down and then I think I might just do a quick little search for a word snippet that would go with this. I think that would be super cute. I think this just needs a little more glue under this little edge here. I have a whole bunch of threads stuck to my glue. <laughs> <laughs> Not untypical of me. Okay. There we go. Now, 
see if I can quickly find a word snippet that would be fun. This one. Hold on. On the journey. So maybe this little mouse is somebody that we encounter on our journey, or maybe he's on the journey. But let's just plunk this up here. On the journey. Every little element that you add like that just adds a little something that's a special little element. So now what we need to do, we finished this page. Now we're moving over here to add our scraplet of fabric with a charm on a bulb pin. So for this one, I added this piece of broken jewelry. And so I've got this piece of fabric here and I've got another piece of the same broken jewelry. So I'm going to just grab a bulb pin and ignore my gluey fingers. I've been working all day. <laughs> so we're going to plunk that on a bulb pen and we'll just set that aside and then just give me a couple of moments because I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch this on to the side here. So the way I'm going to do it, it's, so you'll see this is a very free form piece. It's not neatly cut into a rectangular tab. I don't want that. I want it to be purposely kind of scrappy looking like it adds character. Okay. So I'm just going to do um, probably a zigzag stitch right down it. So I'll be right back. Okay. I am back and we've got our, our um, tab here that's been stitched on. So now I will take my bulb pin charm and just undo it and pin it right through the fabric as so, so it will just kind of hang there. Okay, so now we're on to the last page of this particular spread and it involves a pocket. So this is the what I've chosen for the pocket. So I just need to get rid of a little bit of the, the edge here of this. It's a little too long. Tear that off. And then the other part of this pocket, I want to round the corner on the inside. And this is just a simple scrap of um, scrapbook paper. So I'm going to use art glitter glue to just glue down two sides, the bottom and the inside side. And then you can embellish this pocket some more if you would like to. I'm trying to decide if I want to add something more to it. I've got these little um, technical drawings, I've got all sorts of things. Hmm. Maybe this little red oak leaf um, stamp would be nice on there. So what I'm putting inside here, like I said over here, I used like some kind of a vintage fun document of some kind. So for this one, I use this Indian Hawthorne plant card. And I thought for this one, I would use this little tic-tac-toe card. It's just like a little tic-tac-toe. It's from the Valentine's Day. Um, so I think I'm going to just back it with something fun. Um, and then that's what I'm going to use in there. So I've got some paper that I sprayed with acrylic spray earlier today for another project. So I think I will use it to back this. You could use a vintage bingo card. Um, you could use any kind of like a vintage document that also maybe allows some writing space. Perfect. Now, 
think what I might do with this is just, this, you don't have to do this, this is just a little extra. I'm just going to stitch this along the side maybe. I will be right back. Okay, so that has been stitched around on the side. I ended up stitching it on this side rather than the other side. Um, so yeah, I think I will put this in here like so. Then I'm going to use this on here. And maybe, actually, I might do like a little bit of a collage on this pocket just because I think it could use a little something. So maybe we'll start with a bit of just scrappy spine from an old book. Um, you can do whatever you want here. You don't have to do a collage. I didn't do a collage on the other one because it was a more, it was a floral paper and I just felt like it was busy enough without anything else. This one I'm just going to dress it up a little because it could use it. So you do whatever you want to do and what you like. And then you'll be making a notebook that you're really going to like because you're choosing your own style. Okay. There we go. And I think I just want a little bit of little tiny piece of my gold bee washi tape that is kind of one of my signatures that I put in most things. Oops. There we go. Move my scrappy man out of the way here. Okay, so I think we're done. That was a quick one, right? So we have our fabric flip, we have the stenciled page with the glue down and the tab with some nice little jewelry there on a bulb pin with our vintage document of some kind inside here or anything you like. It could just be a piece of handmade ephemera um, and then a little pocket here that in this case I collaged. So that's the two of them together. same recipe slightly different result so that is what we're up to today um, the next video in this series will be the third spread for the book starting with I believe um, page number four no five sorry page number five so see you next time if you haven't yet subscribed I would love it if you did you can check the playlist um, to find all of the videos for this series under my flea market style travelers notebook make along there's um, a playlist for this whole series so thanks so much everyone and have a great day bye for now